Hello, hello. Welcome to Actors Anonymous Podcast. It's me, Wee Sam, <laughs> your host. Co-hosting with me is Jordan Burbank. How you doing, man? What if they didn't know this is the first time tuning in? I know. It's kind of, uh, so I was, in there. I've, I've been debating whether I should introduce the show as just like our guest today and just go into it. But I kind of like doing the little, you know, a little intro where people, I, maybe I mean, it's, it's their first time listening. I like the attention. You like the attention. That's why you are. <laughs> <laughs> our guest today is Ido Samuel. Ido is, uh, is an Israeli actor best known for uh, Fill the Void, a film that won seven Israeli Academy Awards. Uh, you have a short film uh, in, that just aired in the New York International Film Festival yeah. called Unforgivable Sin. Right. And you've got two feature films coming up, Introducing Jodea, right? right. Yeah. And The Spark. Yes. Dude, you are a feature film, indie film machine right now. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very grateful for the, pro- the opportunities. It's like really exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and you've been, you said, as our conversation before, you've been yeah. here for three years in right. L.A., yeah. But most of your life was spent in Israel yes. being an actor. Yeah. We have kind of an international show today with our other guest to uh, a certain extent. And so I found this wonderful quote from a book that I just want to read real quick. And just by happen chance, I read it like a week ago. And it's just perfect timing that I should read it right now. Perfect. It's from Brother of the Third Degree. And it's by Will Garber. And this is the quote. Never was there more powerful and universal teachers than art, and great is the influence we exert in the world through its mysterious language, the meaning of which, while often incomprehensible to the intellect, seldom fails to reach the soul. And I love that because I got to see some of your clips online, and I forgot which which film it was, and I apologize, but uh, it was uh, in... uh, in, in Hebrew, you know, the, and I don't understand Hebrew, you know, yeah. so, but I could understand what was going on in the scene, which I always find when you can do that, when you don't know what they're saying, but you can kind of understand what's going on. That's great. You've really done your job as an actor and the filmmakers done their job and it's, it's wonderful. Do you find you can, what's the best way to put it, that you're able to translate that through like American films as well? Uh, yeah, I think emotion is something uh, international, mm-hmm. and like uh, the subject that we go through, like Israelis or other people, like it's something like that humankind go through. If it's a family drama, like with your parents or with your sister, or if it's a love story between someone you love, right? It's international, and uh, yeah, I think I love watching like uh, foreign films, like not in, only in, like not Israeli film, like fer- French film, like one of my favorites, like. Jacques Audiard and, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and like what, whatever like Marion Cotillard is doing in France, like it's amazing. It's like you see this rawness, this realness um, that you connect to it. Even sometimes more than you know. I grew up like watching American films, and this is not my language. And yeah, we learn English in school, but this is how it got taught English, like by watching films and oh wow, and like kind of like getting the American humor to me, you know, like, <laughs> like I grew up on friends and it's crazy because then I went to invite it for a Shabbat dinner here mm-hmm. and then I'm sitting in front of like the, like this writer and then he told me, yeah, I wrote friend and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, man, like my sense of humor is because of you. It's like, it's crazy. <laughs> so it's surreal. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy how that sometimes comes full circle stuff you've seen when you were younger and then yeah. meeting the, the people responsible for it. Right. So I'm curious and I, I want to get into this. Acting in Israel, how is it different and how is it the same from acting in the States or uh, in L.A. specifically? Well, yeah, LA, it's pretty different than New York. Um, it's very different. First mm-hmm. of all, when we go to audition, like you don't carry on your photo. <laughs> like, <Okay. it's, laughs> when I started here, it was so weird. Like your headshot, right? My headshot. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I, like it, I still don't make sense of it. Like. <laughs> it's like you have my picture in your computer it's so easy now and you have my resume on your computer and it's easier like why do i need to print every edition a photo of myself and i see like people's like wedding line with holding pictures that got nothing to do with the way they look now so like all the photoshop mm. like really so that's that's weird <laughs> but um acting wise yeah i got also like asking a few casting calls here like how many followers do i have in the beginning, ah, the first time I got asked that I I wasn't hardly on social media, so I 
and I didn't know what she was talking about. So she asked me like, so how many followers do you have? And I'm like, I hope no one follows me. And I'm like, why are you excited <laughs> that people follow you on the street? Like <laughs> someone explained it to me. And so I, that, that's, that was a shock to you. Like, they they i guess they incorporate a lot of like the business aspect that you know yeah. like how, how how many viewership how much viewership can you bring into this project if we right. cast you i mean that's a big thing here so that's they don't really care about that in in israel too much no they no not so much they they see in the audition they just want to see your talent and yeah there's sometimes the look got a kind of like importance to that but right uh here i, I find it like in some cases really important and it's kind of hard for me because like I want to keep to myself and just want right. to let my work talk. But then I see like in LA especially, there are so many actors and mm-hmm. so many people get cast now just because of social media. So I feel yeah. like yeah. I need to keep up my game, you know? Uh, that's, if you want to work here, I mean, that's a, that's, it's changing. And so yeah. it's evolving and you got to keep up with it. I know we've had discussions with, you know, other guests on the show and it's part of being an actor out yeah. here now. Unfortunately. You need to play the game, right? And, sometimes I don't want to play it. You know, it's like, I don't want to post today or I don't want to post yeah. in a week or two weeks. Like, why do I need to post? Yeah. Um, so I want to ask even a more specific question because I'm curious. Have you gotten to audition out here for like indies and, and feature films, I'm yeah. assuming? Okay. I've been lucky enough whenever I go into an audition or a casting office, uh, for the most part, it's been great casting, uh, casting directors. They really work with you. They really know what they're doing. And if, especially if it's like for like a, let's say a dramatic scene, a really intense scene, they'll kind of work with you. And then when you bring in for the callbacks, the director will be there, the producer will be there and they'll really like not workshop it, but direct you with it and, you know, yeah. see, you know, work with you in that, in that moment. Is it the same with Israeli um, directors, producers and cast directors like that? Are they really involved or is it the type of thing where you go out in front of them and they're like, thank you. Yeah. And they don't want want that interaction. I think here, like also, like every director works differently. Mm-hmm. But in Israel, because it's so small and the industry itself, it's so small. Most of us like kind of know each other. Great. So like, even if I don't know the director, like most of them like the personal touch and they do like to talk personally a little bit and then they let you act and then they give their you their own notes. And like the director of Field of Void, I remember the the audition process, like, before we knew, we even knew it's going to be a big film because the story is so small. It's just about a small family, like in mm. most of it, like in one location. So I thought, okay, it's a small film. It's going to be nice. And I went inside and the director is a, a Hasidic Jew. So it's like, that was the first shock, like seeing a Hasidic Jew, like as a director wow. for, a, for a secular audience. And I didn't know, like, I can talk to you. I can, like, I know I can't touch, but like, what's going on? So then she, like, she was very calming. Like, she's the most charismatic person I ever met. So, like, she just smiled and you feel like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry. I got to just to clarify for our listeners. Yeah. It was a she, first of all. It was a yeah, female. And right. she was um, a Hasidic Jew. Hasidic Jew, which is, um, please forgive my ignorance, but that's where it's the conservative dress, correct? Yeah, and they have certain, um, I don't want to say laws, but regulations yeah, yeah. or laws, I guess. like. Um, well, yeah, rules. Like, uh, let's just say rules. Beliefs. beliefs say, yes. Yeah. Where like you can't uh, shake hands, correct? Right, or right. you can't uh, sit next to them if I'm not mistaken, yeah, correct? Yeah. Um, you can be alone with them in a the room. They need to be an, another female right, with them. Due, due to their beliefs. Yeah. And so, wow, that must yeah. have really been a shock for you as an, yeah. uh, uh, an actor, especially because that's part of the, it's more common and, you know, you're, um, you understand the sociological uh, laws and regulations because you're in Israel and so I that's didn't more know common. so much about it before the film I have to say oh really I knew about yeah. them I knew a little bit but before because I'm very secular um, and before entering the film and I'm supposed to play a Hasidic Jew so I didn't know a lot about that so wow when I did get the part so I asked for like to from the director if she know anyone who can like work with me and show me the around. So she had this Hasidic Jew and showed me like the Hasidic neighborhoods and he showed me like the kind of like nuances and like uh, what do they do and their slang and like it's so different than secular people and like it's open in a whole new world. Yeah. But also the shock that you talked about, the shock effect was the most funniest when we went to the Venice Film Festival. So we had the premiere there, like the world premiere there. So we went to the red carpet and like all of us, the actor like all like dressed up and everything. So the director came with her Hasidic uh, outfit 
and she bought a Rossman. And Rossman is a Hasidic Jew with like wearing all black, a head, like a like, long beard and like sideburn. And all the cameras from all the world press went to him. Like everyone had to take pictures with him. And he was like standing there shy in the red carpet. And like, this was like amazing and surreal. Like just this experience. Wow. So many barriers must have been broken with this yes, project. Yes. It opened like a whole new world. And like, I love that though. It brought the world together. Also with the secular people in Israel, I think. And also like the Hasidic people, like, we understood the secular people more about the Hasidic world through that because most of the films that were made in Israel about Hasidic world mm -hmm. was like someone wants to get out of the Hasidic world or have right. a problem with that. And this one was just a family drama happening in, like, in one family, a Hasidic family. And they, they didn't want, try to force it on you. Just You just watch it and like get into their world. Oh. This is incredible. <laughs> you know, and, and it, it circles back to what we said before about the quote. Um, when you understand, um, oh my gosh, what is it? When you understand somebody, a culture that you've never been immersed in before, like you have these, like maybe sometimes stigmas on them, right? Right. Regardless if they're a Hasidic Jew or wherever in the world, yeah. another group of people, uh, a minority of whatever sort, or even a majority. But whenever they, whenever you create art that shows them real and shows that, oh, we have the same problems as other people in the world. Exactly. You're connecting this bridge that really develops a wisdom and understanding and uh, uh, sympathy, too, as well. And it, it starts wide. It just widens your perspective a little bit more. And that's amazing. I'm so glad she, yeah. this you happened. You know, before man. that, a lot of people thought, oh, all the Hasidic women are just in the kitchen, just cooking, and they do nothing. But right. then you see this husband let his, his wife like just do let, let her dream come true and like go for it all the way and she got so much success around the world just like this Hasidic Jew with a lot of talent and a lot of words a lot of like ways to tell stories and a very small and intimate thing that became like a big blow up like in Israel like it was one of the best successful movies and also in the US like one of the most selling uh, foreign films in the US so like got a lot of success from like what we thought before like people who didn't know like thought oh Hasidic Jews like are only in their communities they right. don't know anything it's called fill the void correct? fill the void fill yeah. the void uh, um, did you did you want to say something earlier no, I'm sorry I, I, I have been rendered speechless today <laughs> <laughs> no it's okay it's okay uh, I was just I, I'm so glad that this that came out especially nowadays with the equality of pay for women in, yeah. in the industry and I, I hope this gets more traction over here i mean we got to post uh, more about this Absolutely. whatever on our on our social and everything because i want as many people to know about this because this is a big big thing especially it's a unique circumstance too a, a female acidic jew creating this film and ah, i love it yeah. what was it that brought you to uh the film like what brought your interest to wanting to play the role uh first of all the challenge like i love doing characters that's really far from me from my world and i see myself as an actor like I, like i have this uh i don't know how to call it like um gift that uh, in my profession that i can like travel and like mm -hmm. live so many different lives and wear so many different hats and like uh, have, having to be able to live so many different lives which is great and this is why i chose to be an actor and then i saw like my agent approached me and said yeah they want to like uh, audition you for this role and it's a Hasidic Jew and I did like a few shorts when I played like a not a Hasidic but a religious Jew just with a like a yarmulke on me mm -hmm. no, not a beard I thought oh that's why they want to see me and then, then he told me no you need to grow a beard like for like four months you need to grow your hair curl, uh, curl uh, like side, side, uh, side hair and I said oh wow that's going to be a challenge <laughs> and uh, and then I read like just the scene from the audition there the language was so beautiful, so poetic. So like I said, wow, that sounds like wow. it's going to be beautiful. Oh and then I met the director and then it's like, wow, she's she's something special. So and yeah, luckily, like when we got to work on the set, it was just amazing atmosphere. Um, <laughs> Have you yeah. had any uh, bad auditions in Israel that you could talk about? Bad auditions? Like uh, over here, we, we ask our guests a lot of times, like, uh, you know, you have those auditions where something crazy happens or you give a really weird performance and it gets awkward or something like that. Has that ever happened to you? Or are you just perfect? You're just no, nailing everyone every time. I'm sure it happened. I'm trying to remember, <laughs> though. Um, I'm, I'm, 
because it is a small community and i can only imagine if something embarrassing were to happen it would be tenfold because it's like well <laughs> that that story is going to carry around pretty quick uh i'm sure it did i try to remember now i can <laughs> <laughs> well i keep on embarrassing myself in the u.s just in the daily life you know because when I got here, I thought like my English is perfect because I got great grades in, uh, in Israel. <laughs> then I'm getting here and like people are like, what, what, what? <laughs> and I'm like doing mistakes like uh, get, I got to LA the first time. So how do I get to the beach? Like what? The beach, the ocean, <laughs> ah, the beach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm calling to stop at an apartment. Uh, Hi, uh, do you have clean sheets on the bed? Clean what? Sheets on the bed. Ah, oh, you mean sheets. Yeah, okay. Like stuff like that. Yeah, it's a, just a tiny change. Yeah. That's and awesome. I have worse than that, but I better not to embarrass myself too much. Yeah. Um, are you finding your, and I hope not, but are you finding your auditions you're being sent out here pretty, um, are you feeling pigeonholed like it's a one type of character or are you going out for a wide variety of things? Uh... I feel I can do a wide variety and I, I do get called sometimes to a wide variety. I feel like some of the casting directors that haven't met me yet feel like, oh, his reel is good, but it's all in Hebrew, probably can't speak English and they won't bother to see me. Uh, gotcha. But yeah, for the two feature films that, that I'm going to be in, like luckily it's so different one than the other one. Like one is a Holocaust film when I'm playing a Holocaust survivor and it's supposed to like it was a lot of weight for that and we're going to shoot in Europe and it's going to be really heavy, dramatic. Wow. And the other one, introducing Judea, it's a comedy and I'm playing this douchebag actor. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's like one of these. So, so different. So yeah. I'm happy that I've been able, like in, I think that it's going to be like Good. two months difference between the two that really like have a, like a personality <laughs> disorder from that. But no, I mean, yeah. that's part of being an actor. Yeah. What was, uh, what was your decision to move out here based on like, uh, wh when did you decide that LA was like your choice for like your career? Yeah. Well, I always wanted to come here, uh, ever since I was like a little kid and watching the Hollywood films in Israel. Uh, I never got the opportunity. Uh, then I, you finished high school in Israel. You have to go to the army three years cause it's mandatory. And I think the first week when I finished the army, I uh, went started to do acting workshops and I tried to go to the U.S. But in Israel, if you just finish the army, uh, they won't let you come to the U.S. because they're scared you're going to stay here and start like working oh. legally. <laughs> so I couldn't come as a tourist even for a long time. So I started like work, uh, studying acting like five years in Israel, started to do like a lot of films in Israel. And then Field the Void came out and it got all the success around the world. And I traveled with it to the film festivals and then Sony bought it here. So I was invited for the screenings here. So I went to the immigration again and said, like, listen, I'm just invited to the to the screenings. So they let me go to the screenings. And then a casting director here, uh, Valerie McCaffrey, saw my reel and she wanted to meet me and audition me. And then she became my manager and I got the artist visa and ended up staying here for another three years. Oh, that's fantastic. So, yeah. L very lucky. Very yeah, blessed. Yeah. yeah, seriously. Congrats, man. I wish it was luck. I like, could be knacking for 10 years. So it's like a lot of hard work. Oh, and... absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, your biggest struggle out here, you might have mentioned it uh, in terms of whenever you transition from one culture to another, did you find that being a culture shock when you came out here? Uh, L.A., mainly because New York I studied in New York for four months mm -hmm. when I just got here for the screenings and New York is a lot more like Israel like a lot of variety of people you go to the subway there's so many different people just in front of you and you can just walk places and just talk to random people when I got to LA I was in shock because like especially <laughs> after New York first of all I didn't have a car for the first like five months so I drove the bus and then like uh <laughs> I met the, this cast, big casting director that we, were, we won't name names, but, and then I told her, yeah, I come with the boss. And then she gave me this look like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have money? You're an actress. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And just like going to the coffee place here, coffee shops here, and just hearing all the people are talking about just films and the beginners said, wow, so many directors, so many actors. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, it's great. Yeah. And then you <laughs> learn that, yeah, uh, that yeah sure sure <laughs> at the beginning like I, like people yeah i have a script i want to send you like wow i'm getting so many scripts in by mail it's going to be i'm going to be in so many years. it's amazing <laughs> so like yeah, yeah. Then, like, slowly you understand the culture here and like 
Yeah, everybody has a production company. Which is great, yeah. but yeah, you know, you need to <laughs> wait till it happens. I think LA is a culture shock. Just because uh, I, I used to live in New York and uh, I went to school there. I was there for like five years and then I came out here. And for me, even like I was from a small suburban town, then lived in the city. And then coming out here, you think, oh, big city. It's got to be like very similar to New York. You get here, it's like. It's so expansive, and yeah. everything's only like two floors tall. And you're like, "This is a city. Like right. this is this is how this works. Like this is so weird to me." Yeah. And like, I just think it's it is. It's a totally different universe when you come out to LA. Yeah, I remember when I just landed after New York in LA. Like everything was flat. Like where are the buildings? <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Why is everything so where, flat? Where is the city? I but then when it. I finally got the artist visa and like got an apartment, I understood why. Because like my first week in my apartment, I felt my first earthquake in LA. Oh really? Like, oh wow. Why is someone shaking my my apartment? What's going on? <laughs> this is why the rent is so low. Like <laughs> once yeah. a month, yeah, all the apartments. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. But... I, I always think that's really brave when somebody moves to an entirely different country. I know you said it's as you know, you know, it's a lot of hard work and stuff like that. But I think it's super brave. I mean, it's one of the bravest things you can do, especially people who immigrate immigrate to another country. And did you know anybody out here or no? See, no. that's that's I, I had like the, the lead actress from Field of Void was here because she just signed with the big agency mm -hmm. and like she was here, so she introduced me to, to some people and luckily. Some people saw Feel the Void, and I had another short film, The Divide, who came out in like you know the Jewish film festival around the U.S. So people recognized me from that. Yeah. So I went to like this dinner, then someone uh, recognized me from the dinner, invited me to a, to a Shabbat dinner in this place, and then I met someone else, and then like then it's like the Shabbat dinners table like all over like uh, yeah. LA. Got to know some people, but yeah, wow. it's but it's hard. It's hard when you come here. And you don't know anyone. You don't mm. know how the, the industry works. Did you feel lonely at all? Yeah, a lot, yeah. a lot. How did you uh, how did you break through that? Uh, well, here I started to do acting workshops and met some great people through that, some great actors, some great friends now, Good. and uh, the Israeli connection. So, like, I met some Israelis, and it's easier, like, culturally to be with them. Mm -hmm. uh, but slowly, slowly, it's still hard to meet new people here. Like comparing to New York, because New York, I just like went to a random coffee place, sat there by myself, started talking to the people next to me, then we hanging out like in the evening. Mm. But here it's like, sometimes I feel it's lonely because you feel if you can contrib contribute to their dreams, like sometimes they're oh like, this, gosh, yes. there's this race here. And if you, you can't help them, they then they want so much heck like, hang with you. But then if they're here, they, they, they can help them so like i don't want to like, generalize of course they're like different people but no, that's a lot that's... Of what i experienced like then oh you just book two feature films let's hang, let's hang with them and then that is you... so co that is common yeah. here yeah and i you, mean you need to have thick skin here and you can't hold grudges and you can't say oh you didn't want to hang with me a week ago and now you want you know just you need to understand the other person and that's smart, such a good right? attitude, man. Yeah. yeah, it's good. That makes me think of uh, we we did uh, the workshop with. Oh my God, Mark Sackett, and uh, it was a it's a networking workshop that was kind of explaining how when people network and you just go up to someone and you're like, hey, hey, what do you do? And it's basically like, hey, how can you help me? How can you help me? How yeah, can you help yeah, me? Yeah. And it was like a total reverse of like literally changing your mindset to going up to someone to be like, how can I help you? And, and being able to like find out more about them in order to see what you could do for them. Because there's always some type of possibility that somebody knows someone or somebody is connected to somebody else. Yeah. And there's always like a system of like, it, it's sort of like we're all we're all on the earth kind of thing. It's like, why are we all like just like casting people aside when it's like we can all find a way to benefit one another? Yeah, yeah. but like, that I, all I, needs to change I in still LA. find it hard because I truly just want to meet friends that yeah so i'm looking for people not from the industry to be yeah friends that's actually that's know? even harder to them, <laughs> then you know they're just friends with you because like they they like you not because you can help them and like you don't need to talk to them and and like start to analyze oh now he's nice to me because he's he needs that or that yeah you know so it's like you're a, you're a doctor like but like on set right or yeah. like you know you're tied to the industry somehow oh, yeah then, and i, I, I never been invited to a lot, <laughs> lot of, like industry events here like i hate talking about myself <laughs> and i find people like right away hi i'm blah 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 and give me their car they're like what <laughs> what's going on <laughs> like, yeah. do you just, react exactly like that you slap it out of their hand like, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, i'm like i'm being nice I'm kidding, but like, I'm i went to this uh, yeah, 
I won't name names again. But I went to this like industry party like uh, two weeks ago, and uh, it was it was great, a lot of fun, met mm -hmm. some people, and then like uh, the, someone that I met, another director, just uh, introduced me to his friend, and his friend like say I am blah blah blah, and gave me a script, and I'm like holding the wow. script like. What <laughs> am I supposed to be here to do? This? Which is nice. It's great that you wrote a script, but man, I can't help you. I'm not a producer. I'm just an yeah. actor like you. But there's there's a certain amount of tact that you have to have whenever you do that yeah. kind of stuff. Like a paper um, script, like they handed you an actual like a ninety stuff. page <laughs> script. <laughs> they said like, I'll yeah, send like, it to your email. Yeah, like, a like folder full of script. <laughs> and I I don't I don't judge them. Like I understand the hunger. And like when you get here, like no one. No one under explained to you this is how you need to behave. Right. This is how you need yeah. to be tactful and like. Sometimes you feel I, I understand it. Some sometimes you feel desperate. Oh, no one wants to see me. I just go all the way. I just and it, yeah. some people don't understand that can that can hurt them. But uh, yes, I see other people just so perfectly doing that. Like you think they're they're best friends, like they're hanging, but then you understand that they're so they know what to do, they know what to say, yeah. and they get jobs because of that. So that that I give them. That's a great uh, quality they have. Yeah. They're able of, if it's, yeah, it's a good balance. It's a here, balance. Here it's a balance. It's, it's absolutely oh, it's a, a balance. Fine balance. And I think it's the intention too. You know what I mean? Like if you start hanging out with somebody and you just like their company, you know, you become friends and then something it's like, Hey, I got this thing. Do you want to be in it? It, it comes up more naturally that way. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of met. Uh. <laughs> Wait, are we friends? <laughs> are we really I mean, I, I thought so. <laughs> but like, even when we hang out, it inevitably because we're so immersed we in our business. work, we talk about our our business, and we we like talk about other things as well. But I like talking about business with you. I like talking about acting yeah. with you and producing with you because there's... we have the same mindset when it comes to that kind of stuff. It also comes with drive. Like I think when you're when you're so passionate, like you you moved to a completely different country to follow your passion. And like, I like the same, I think we, a lot of people, that's why I, I, I agree with you. Like I, I want to find people that are like, you know, don't have a tie to the industry or like has, you know, it's, it's not, it's just about getting to like hang out and stuff. But ultimately I have so many friends that I work with that when, even in our downtime and we just talk about ideas of scripts or like different things like uh, on every single topic or just talk about business. It's like one of those things that we're all in LA and I don't know how many people like love LA. Like they don't move here to be like, that's the city of dreams. Like, I feel like I moved here to be like, I want to be immersed in my, in the culture of my industry. Right. And it's so much fun to just talk about it all the time. And maybe, maybe I'm addicted to it or something. No, maybe I have great. a problem. That's, that's great. <laughs> no, opposite. I wish I was more like that. I'm excited <laughs> about that. Well, it's also like, it just hit me. Like, you're not, it just hit me. You're not lazy. <laughs> <laughs> it just hit me. We're not friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't like to hang around with like lazy people or people who make excuses because I feel like that's a negative energy around me and it's sure. a negative mindset. And I like people who are like go getters. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And, maybe like something falls through with you know some projects but eventually something pulls through you know what i mean especially with your stuff i know you start a lot of different things sometimes but you it's know like two, or th <laughs> two it works for you it works for you yeah so like maybe two or three of those things pull for through and it's because you're punching through i'm like oh i want i like that having that energy that attitude because yeah. then it puts that, that fire underneath me and the same with nicole like you know what i mean that's yeah. it's important to surround yourself with people like that exactly. because staying motivated in this city remembering why you're here not being affected by the negative things it's difficult yeah and surrounding yourself i think with people who are motivated and go-getters and stuff like that right. it makes you even more motivated it's like a True. i always think of it uh i know i get this from my mom too but it's like a it's like this drive that's sort of like it's a competition but like like so, you, like you're doing something and you're motivating me, and it's a competition internally for me to want to get to where you are, like to want to motivate to be, like it motivates me when people I know who are around me are doing good because I want to be doing good too, and it makes me want to drive myself to get up to their level. Yeah, and I think that you, I think everyone, if you keep doing that, you just kind of rise together. You need the people that pushes you. Yeah, to, yeah. I want to. I, I want to like laser in on something. Whenever I, when I first moved to LA, and I'm, I'm still doing it now, the people who are working, the people who are making headway in their careers, um, who do leave po live positive lives, I always go, okay, what are they? I ask them, like, hey, what are you doing here? Or like, what are you doing with? How? What kind of relationship do you have with your reps? Or I, I start asking them questions and how they live their life and how. And I found that they're 
or similarities with all like the successful people. I think that's really important too, to really dissect why those people are up there. Yeah. Um, and also their following, how many people they uh, have. That's yeah, so important. <laughs> okay, so important. This, is, this is kind of random. <laughs> and maybe your uh, PR person can uh, uh, <laughs> fit you into this part. But the new Instagram icon, do you know, guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Really? <laughs> you, you know Instagram, right? Yeah, yeah, do you yeah, have Instagram? Yeah, I know. It, yeah. Okay. Uh, the icon. Did you ever see it when what it was before and yeah, how they changed yeah, it? Polaroid sure. camera. Sure. It looks cool. I like the old icon. So Instagram. Yeah. I know you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Let's we're change just, it back. We are supposed to be sponsored. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> That'd be the weirdest sponsorship. Why would, why would they want us? <laughs> um, man, have yeah. you seen? Uh, we're we're almost out of time. But before we go, I want to recommend a film. Maybe you've already saw, saw it. It's a foreign film. I believe it's somewhere in Latin America or South America. It's called The Secret in Their Eyes. It was nominated. Really it was either nominated for a Academy Award or it won one for Internet Best International Film. Um, there is a American version of it, but I would recommend watching the. What happened in the film? Uh, a woman gets. Uh, well, this is kind of graphic. She gets raped and killed, and uh, her husband knows who the killer is and is going after him while a cop or a lawyer is trying to figure it out as well. It's like a lot of like a, it has one of the best uh, sequence of uh, like a little segment of film in a soccer stadium. And I don't know how they they shot it. But it's incredible. It's a full, fully packed stadium. There's probably CGI or um, After Effects of some sort. But it's like all one shot. Some of it's like looks like it's one shot kind of thing. Amazing, amazing film. And the ending, you will never see yeah. coming. I'll give you away the end. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do have one last question. I yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was like? We asked what your worst audition was, but I was curious on. Was there any moment in any of your career so far that just was like a re revelation for you? Like something that made you realize like, this is exactly what I want to be doing. This is like the, the it moment for me. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I did a, a short film in Israel where I played a kidnapped soldier. So I really like to get into every character that I'm doing. So like during takes, I'm like, I stayed in the small, like, uh, uh, warehouse when they shot it like where it's supposed to be held and like I started to get into it and then I started to shake and then like, the director came to like <laughs> and I'm like scared then I'm like wow I like was scared from the director like I got to, into it so much and then they say okay let's take a break said, no no let's shoot it let's shoot it and like, <laughs> then I understood like how much I the hunger for that and how much I feel satisfied when I do get it like the emotion and get, I do get into the character so much that I'm telling the story and like I'm living the lives like so these kind of moments are like what I'm looking for whenever I'm doing a film mm. so I remember like finishing the, the like the the shootings and I felt like wow now I'm a regular person I'm free I'm not really like and I still went to bed having like nightmares and still like shaking oh and like wow I really got into it and like I need this shrink now or something but no I felt like and then again, I felt so satisfied that I'm being able to do this career, like acting and living this kind of lives that hopefully I will never like <laughs> get to live. But it's like it's a blessing. This profession we we do we talked about it a lot now. There's so much to do around like surrounding the, like, the acting career. But when you do get to act and you do get a good script and a good director, you feel like okay, all the bullshit around this is what it's for. So the work for an actor is all the surrounding to get the job. But when you do get the job, you feel like, ah, oh, this, I'm not working. It's like, I'm living, you know? Oh, oh, I love that. I'm not working. I I'm that. living. <laughs> Ido, thank you for coming on the show, man. Thank you for having it's me. It's such an honor to have you on, seriously. It's an honor it's, to be here. It's, uh, it's amazing to uh, have like-minded artists with us in the studio. And so, seriously, absolute pleasure. Thank you and so anytime much. you want to come on, and plug your uh, next uh, film, you're more than welcome to come on. Thank you so Absolutely. much. I appreciate it. Of course. Well, we're going to take a short break. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, if you, oh, if you are, you're on social media now. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Where can people find you? 
Uh, Instagram is Ido, IDO underscore Samuel, S A M U E L. Uh, Twitter is Samuel Idodo Ido. <laughs> and uh, Facebook is my name, Ido Samuel. Ido Samuel. That's awesome. It. Such a pleasure. And follow me because I needed a guest for casting. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so, help me get the audition. <laughs> Let's help Ido. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>